preview of the aerobatic phase of flight training. Hi, my name is Art Medour, World War II Air Corps Mustang pilot and Air Force Reserve T-6 instructor pilot. I experienced for myself in the military what aerobatic training can do for a pilot in terms of confidence and mastery of the airplane. Consequently, I have been a strong proponent of aerobatic training for all civilian pilots. In the 60s, I operated an aerobatic training school solely for that purpose. I also wrote a manual at that time called Primary Aerobatic Flight Training with Military Techniques, which is now in print over 20 years and still growing in sales. This is a good indication to me that pilots, beginners and veterans alike, realize that something is missing from their training and are looking to see if something can be done about it. Unfortunately, the FAA does not require this phase of flight training as they did prior to World War II. The military still considers this an important segment of their training, but what about you? Very few schools have formal aerobatic courses. CFIs are usually not aerobatically trained and ignore the subject. So that leaves you out there all alone, which means you have to seek it out and see what it can do for you, even if it means inconvenience and additional costs. This preview will give you an idea of what's involved in the aerobatic phase. You'll see for yourself how easily the maneuvers can be learned and what this training can do for you to build confidence. This is the Balanca Cetabria, which is no longer in mass production, but used ones are abundantly available. It is aerobatically certificated, and in spite of its name, Cetabria, which means aerobatic spelled backwards, it is not an awesome performer, but it is an excellent trainer for the primary phase since it makes you work hard for each maneuver. And it also provides added experience in the handling of a tail dragger. There are also a variety of other good conventional gear and tricycle gear trainers available. Military trainers, home builds, foreign imports, and some factory build types all have one thing in common, to teach you to do the maneuvers that will instill confidence and help make you a safer and more proficient pilot. Let's go up and introduce you to some of the primary maneuvers such as rolls and loops and variations of these. You take the front seat with hands and feet under controls and follow through with me as I explain the execution of the procedures. Those of you taking your primary aerobatic training in a tail dragger will quickly learn to master its idiosyncrasies. Taxiing, especially in a crosswind, will be an initial surprise for you. Takeoff will accentuate the torque effect and resulting P factor as you transition from the three point attitude. And of course, landings are sure to sharpen your skills. Those of you training in tri gear aircraft will miss this experience. Getting the most out of your aerobatic training will require continued activity on your part. You are not going along for the ride, nor are you expected to have fun. The military didn't give a diddly damn if you enjoyed yourself or not. This was a serious phase of flight training directed solely to developing your confidence, your mastery over the airplane, your prompt reaction to unexpected occurrences, and making you a safer and more proficient pilot. You'll handle the controls from the outset, as was done in military training. You climb out with precise turns and air speeds, and while heading for the designated training area, you do a series of warm-up exercises designed to give you the real feel of the airplane. Coordination exercises such as Dutch rolls on a point and in a 45 degree direction change is sure to start the sweat buildup on your brow. In the aerobatic area, more warm-up maneuvers will help relieve any anxieties you may have conjured up in your mind. These will include more Dutch rolls on a point with full vertical banks. Then the military Luffberry turn, requiring a full 90-degree bank throughout a 360-degree turn with G-loading you can feel. 
and the real mastery maneuver, the high angle power on rudder control stall, still used by today's military and called the oscillation stall or walk down stall. Next comes the chandelle, which many of you may have done in the civilian FAA fashion. However, in aerobatic training, your goal is the real feel of the airplane and the military style chandelle with its extreme attitudes and preciseness are a proven value. Here you will experience banking and climbing from shallow to extreme, approaching the full inverted position. Keeping the perspiration flowing, you move on to the military wing over, which will be the forerunner for the Lazy 8. The extreme wing over will allow many of you to experience momentarily full inverted flight for the first time. The extreme attitude will prepare you for the military Lazy 8. In contrast to the mild civilian type Lazy 8, you will learn to control the aircraft in precise high speed shallow banks to low speed inverted banks while your propeller cuts through your horizon reference point. Once the warm up is out of the way and you mop your brow again, we'll go into the first real aerobatic training maneuver. Aerobatics are best learned in a progressive sequence, allowing you to understand the entry and recovery procedure and gaining confidence with each maneuver. Most of you know spins. Let's try a normal precision spin as done in the Satavia and progress from there. After clearing the area, line up with a ground reference such as a road. In the Satavia, retard the throttle and bring the nose in a stall attitude about 30 degrees above the horizon. As the speed bleeds off, keep wings level while continuing back on the stick. Just prior to the nose dropping, tuck stick hard back and kick in hard rudder in the direction of rotation. Hold everything full in and yell out the turns as you cross the reference road. One half, one, one and a half. About 10 degrees before your recovery point, kick in hard opposite rudder to slow the rotation. And as the nose intersects the road reference, pop the stick forward enough to break the stall, immediately neutralize rudders, and begin prompt pull out to avoid excess speed. Here it is once more. That's a good job. As you were able to see, the normal spin is a power off vertical down rotation of the airplane. Next, we'll progress to a power on horizontal rotation of the airplane. This is, of course, known as the snap roll. The control input remains exactly the same, and the timing is of utmost importance. In the Satabria, the somewhat sluggish snap even allows you to pick out the major compass points as you rotate. Follow through with me on the snap roll. Leave the throttle at cruise setting and bring the nose 10 degrees above the horizon and allow the airspeed to bleed off to 70 miles per hour. At 70 miles per hour, snap stick hard back with simultaneous kicking in of hard rudder in the direction of rotation. Hold everything in and watch yourself snap past 90 degrees to the inverted and back towards upright. 10 degrees before the upright position, kick in hard rudder and almost simultaneous, momentarily pop enough forward stick to recover upright in level flight. That's a sample of a couple of the maneuvers you'll do early in the curriculum. Once you understand the maneuver, all you need is practice to perfect your timing and more practice to attain the degree of accuracy you want. As a civilian pilot, 
you will not be graded on the quality of each maneuver, such as roundness of the loop as opposed to egg-shaped loop. However, you will build the desire to discipline yourself to attain a high degree of accuracy in each maneuver, such as speed control, heading, and timing, all of which will be reflected in your normal flying skills later on. Let's go on to the looping maneuvers. These will start with the normal loop, progress to the Cuban 8, and then on to the Immelman turn. Control input is the same in all, only the recovery varies. First, we'll do the normal loop. Fly over a selected ground reference road. Begin a medium dive to attain an airspeed of 140 miles per hour in the Satavia. Commence a brisk pullback up to vertical climb, keeping wings level. Apply full power with continuing pullback on the stick. Check your wings in relation to the horizon off to your side. Continue gentle pullback on the stick while inverted. Tilt your head back to view the oncoming horizon, and as your nose cuts through the horizon, ease off on the throttle, and return to brisk pullback to recover to avert speed buildup. Not too bad. That deserves a nice pat on the back. Next, we'll go on to the Cuban 8, also called the Horizontal 8. The entry is exactly like the normal loop, except a speed of 145 miles per hour can be used if desired by your instructor. As the nose drops 30 degrees below the backside horizon, abort the loop by stopping the downward nose with forward stick and simultaneously half roll. Continue the medium dive to again pick up 145 miles per hour and commence the second loop, which is again aborted 30 degrees below the back horizon, thus completing the Cuban 8. The next variation of the loop is the Immelman turn. The Immelman turn was developed as a combat maneuver by Max Immelman in World War I. Entry light in the Cuban 8 with a 145 mile per hour airspeed. However, this time the loop is aborted with forward stick pressure 20 degrees above the backside horizon with a simultaneous one half roll to level flight. Here it is once more. Next are the rolling maneuvers, aileron roll, barrel roll, and slow roll. Here's how the Cetabria handles these, all slow enough in rotation for you to see what's going on. Follow through with me on these. Here's the aileron roll, the simplest of the rolls. Pick out an imaginary or real point about 20 degrees above the horizon. Shallow dive at cruise power to attain 120 miles per hour. Pull up to your point and apply full stick and rudder in the direction of rotation. That's it. Just sit there while the airplane does its thing. When you're back upright, simultaneously apply opposite rudder and aileron to recover to upright flight. You can't get any simpler than that. Okay, on to the slow roll. A more uncomfortable maneuver which will have you hanging by your seatbelt in the inverted position. Again, while using the same reference point, a shallow dive to 120 miles per hour, pull nose up and pin it to the reference point. Immediately begin full stick and rudder in the direction of rotation. As the airplane rotates on its side, apply some top rudder to keep the nose on the point. When inverted, apply adequate forward stick to keep the inverted nose well above the horizon while reapplying full rolling rudder and maintaining full aileron as you continue to the upright. Recover by neutralizing the control. Let's try that again.
now for the barrel roll, the most comfortable and pleasant of the rolls. Using the same reference point, medium dive to 120 miles per hour. Then, turn away from the direction of your intended roll. Then immediately begin a climbing, rolling turn back towards your reference point, constantly adjusting your stick and rudder control input to allow the airplane to fly equidistant around your point. Smooth control handling will provide a zero G and smooth, full-blown rolling action. That's it for the primary aerobatic maneuvers. Variations of these will be taught in later hours, such as the half snap roll, four point roll, clover leaf, and at the very end, a whiffer deal, and finally, an aerobatic sequence. Before we head back to the field, let's do a whiffer deal, which is simply tying together two or three maneuvers into a short aerobatic sequence. Here you put your learned skills into a non-stop maneuver, which is sure to give you a great feeling of confidence in your ability to handle the plane in all attitudes with relative ease. Here we go for a looping Whifferdill, consisting of a normal loop, continue on through to a half Cuban 8, and recover from an Immelman turn. Okay, while we're hot, let's put everything we learned into a finale, a continuing aerobatic sequence. Our aerobatic sequence will consist of the loop, Cuban 8, Immelman turn, snap roll, barrel roll, slow roll, and we'll throw in a hammerhead turn and a four point roll and the rest of the system diagram card is handy to remember the sequence. Also, keep your head on a swivel and watch out for traffic in the area.
where we are over the airport. Let's do a military overhead approach for landing. These are useful when you need to land in a hurry, and they're excellent for training, making you keep your head out of the cockpit and concentrating on traffic and your landing judgment. Thanks for coming along on that aerobatic phase preview. You were able to see for yourself how the skills and discipline developed in doing these maneuvers can give you the confidence you should have when flying any airplane. You'll be a safer pilot, better able to cope with unexpected situations, and do a lot less white knuckle flying. Don't wait for the FAA or your CFI to take you by the hand and introduce you to this segment of flight. You'll have a long way. Go and seek it out for yourself and don't put it off. Let's go into the classroom and debrief on the maneuvers that we just learned. Also, give you some idea of what aids are available for you in ground training for this type of flying. Ground training is as important in the aerobatic phase as it is in any other segment of flying, and perhaps more so. You need to thoroughly understand the maneuvers you'll be introduced to in the lesson and to review those you have done in previous lessons. Let's look at some training aids that will be helpful in your ground school sessions. Maneuver analysis charts such as these simplify the explanation of each maneuver. A model to demonstrate the airplane attitude in all positions of flight is of great value. Possibly a mock-up of a control assembly for you to sit at to practice input and recovery sequences to help clarify these in your mind. Viewing of video and film lessons with slow motion and freeze frame allows dissection of the maneuver. And probably most important of all, a textbook to study at your leisure hours each maneuver you'll be doing and for critiquing after each flight and also for later use as a reference Bible. In this connection, as I mentioned earlier, I wrote this manual entitled Primary Aerobatic Flight Training with Military Techniques in 1970 while still in the Air Force Reserves. This includes the techniques both in ground training and flight training as taught to thousands of World War II cadets. It also includes input from the civilian students at my Sussex, New Jersey Aerobatic Training Center and still remains a bestseller, which reinforces my belief of the continued interest in this phase of flight training in spite of FAA's negative attitude. Incidentally, this is the just released fourth edition with flight techniques unchanged since World War II. This edition emphasizes tailwheel handling and spins as taught by the military and now being focused on by the FAA. This is also the same manual used by my son, Art Jr., now confidently flying the T-6 and T-28 and other warbirds. And my son, Doug, U.S. Naval Aviator now flying the carrier-based F.A. 18 Hornet. Most of you won't have the opportunity to fly a T-28 or a Hornet, but you have the power to partake in the same primary training. You have to take the initiative. My manual is also available in a Spanish edition, printed in Madrid, and is selling well there and in other Spanish-speaking nations. Both of these manuals are available in aviation bookstores and pilot supply outlets and FBOs. For a personally autographed copy, contact Banner Enterprises, Banning, California. This video preview of the aerobatic phase of flight training you are now watching is also available at those outlets. Look for my video lessons covering all of the primary aerobatic training maneuvers in detail, including comprehensive ground school.
Thanks for watching and fly with confidence. I am pleased to have been able to present to you this preview of the aerobatic phase of flight training. You were able to see how easily these basic aerobatic maneuvers can be executed and realize the value of experiencing this phase. Those of you now undergoing initial flight training can obviously see what you are missing. You more experienced pilots who missed out on this phase should want to take a second look. You parents or grandparents who have children aspiring to become pilots should make sure they investigate this phase and make it a requirement. If the kids want to fly without taking this training, tell them to stay on the ground. I'm no longer trying to change the system to make aerobatic training a requirement. The only change to come about has been the recent requirement for CFI candidates to undergo some spin flight training. All others need only increase their awareness of stalls and spins. If you think, as I do, that this is ludicrous, then you can see it's up to you to take the initiative. In summation, when you are learning to fly, you trust those out there teaching you are not shortchanging you. They are only required to follow the FAA's minimum curriculum, but you may want more. You know you will need confidence, good basic flight skills as a cornerstone for the other phases of flying, and above all, to be able to fly safely. The aerobatic phase was developed to accomplish these things, but it was not an end unto itself. It was treated as another segment of flying designed to turn out a complete pilot. It wasn't intended to make you a stunt pilot, an air show performer, or a competition ace, and having fun wasn't given any consideration. There are a good number of specialized schools and courses offering aerobatic training. If your flight school or CFI aren't equipped for this training, you can ask them to refer you to one of these specialized courses to augment their curriculum. Look at those who have gone through this training. Be sure you add your name to this list.